Good evening, everyone. A very, very warm welcome uh, to you all this evening, the 24th of December at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Maple. Uh, it is Christmas Eve, and how wondrous is that? And we look forward to tomorrow, the best day of the year. Again, a very, very warm welcome. And um, the offerings we, uh, we are gathering today is going towards our building fund. And uh, we're not going to have a formal collection, so uh, we have a basket in the front and at the back. And again, we welcome Reverend Shepherd, who's been here for a while. We welcome him and Mr. Shepherd and all of you again. And we thank all our little elves who've been in the kitchen and all around decorating, preparing the eats, and Alan and the audiovisual team. And of course, we welcome Rick and the girls, the Chunky Monkeys. We're delighted to have them in the family. And it's so good to see you here. A warm welcome again. And just a quick message for those who are watching online or uh, watching the video replay that you can make your donations online through our partnership with Canada Helps. You can go to www.canadahelps.com or excuse me, dot org slash en slash dn slash 56495. Or donations can be mailed or delivered to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 9860 Keel Street, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A. 3Y4. And for those here in the sanctuary, there are special offering envelopes in your pews and there are baskets at the front and the back. And now let us start our worship with Doc Victor. Go ahead, Victor. I want to thank Naomi's niece. Is she here tonight? Would you stand up, please, and tell us your name? Gabriella, thank you so much. Gabriella prepares the bulletins week by week. I've never been in a church where the bulletins are prepared so wonderfully. Gabriella, you've done a wonderful job on the order of service tonight. And thank you. Thank you so much. From the order of service tonight, please. Like the shepherds, we come to the stable, uncertain of what we have heard and seen. Longing to hear a word of peace. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> like the wise ones, we have journeys to make, gifts to offer, and hope in our heart. That this world can be changed by you, our Lord. Here in the stillness of a winter's night, we gather to share the light of Christ, the light that shines in the nightfall. We gather, we gather in the wonder of this, of this night, night to share our joy and thanks for new life. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas Eve our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. And with the shepherds and the wise men adore the child lying in his mother's arms. Together, please. God, God our, our creator, creator and redeemer, redeemer we, we offer, offer this humble prayer on Christmas Eve. Eve. We, come we come to worship with a, with a song of thanks hearts, in our hearts, a song, a song of redemption, redemption a, song a song of hope and renewal. renewal. We pray for joy in our hearts, hope in our God, love to forgive, and peace upon the earth. The lighting of the Advent wreath. Advent, the season of preparing, is nearly over. Our waiting is nearly finished. Now is a time of fulfillment and celebration. In the darkness of night, we give thanks for light. We have already lit a candle of hope. Hope for ourselves and for God's beloved world. We have already lit a candle of peace, peace in our hearts and on earth. We have already lit a candle of joy, joy to the world and within our whole being. We have already lit a candle of love, the promise of God's love for us and for all creation. And now the hour has come and the season is fulfilled. We light, light the, the Christ, Christ candle. candle. The light of the world, the light of possibility. Amen. Our first reader tonight. Oh, we still got to light the candle. Hold on. Oh. Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. 
They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord of God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman, the woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat. All the days of your life I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, in toil you shall not shoot, you should eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are you going to stand? We won't stand for every hymn today, but we will stand for this one. Carol number 117, Herald sound the note of judgment, and we shall sing stanzas only one and four. <laughs> Switch now. Second time from heaven, and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, the only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven, as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring with the gate of their enemies, and but is your for offspring until the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Number 110, come the long expected Jesus. You may remain seated as we sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
third lesson from Isaiah 9, chapter 9, verse 2, 6 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light is shone. For a child has been born from us, for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will be this. Carol 148 stands as one and five. It came upon the midnight clear. And let's stand for this, would you please? Please be seated. Uh, Daniel. The fourth lesson. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on it. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and love. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. With righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meat of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fat one together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass. And the wean child puts his hand on the adder's neck. <clears throat> they will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Carol 164, O little town of Bethlehem, and you remain, you may remain seated as we sing.
Oh, who's doing the song? First of lesson is reading from the Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 25, and verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man. His name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. <laughs> Why isn't it going? Carol, 146 angels from the realms of glory stands as one in five, and let's stand to sing. <laughs>
Please be seated. A Christmas song found in your bulletin tonight, based on Psalm 96. Sing a new song to the Lord. All the earth sing. All you people sing. See God's glory. It is coming. Tell of God's salvation. It is coming to the world. Speak of greatness, strength to overcome. Come out to meet the Lord, proclaiming his name. Come into his holy place and tremble. All the earth tremble in wonder. All the galaxies rejoice in praise. All the oceans and all that lives in the sea sing for joy. All the fields and forests and all that lives on the land shout for joy. For the Lord is coming. He is coming to make everything new. He is coming to put things right. Rejoice for the Lord is coming. But will we see him born in a manger? Will we proclaim him son of Mary? Will we welcome him, this stranger in a strange land? Will we honor him, the unexpected judge of the world? Lord God, we see you born in a manger. Lord Jesus, we proclaim you, son of God and son of man. Loving God, we welcome you. Come make your home among us. Lord Jesus, we honor you and praise you and choose again to follow. Sing a new song to the Lord. Amen. Amen. The sixth lesson. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. We all have our hobbies and one of my hobbies is listening to music, music of all kinds, classical music, jazz, ragtime. When I listen to classical music, I'm especially fond of world-class violinists, you know, listening to premier violin concertos. One of my favorite violinists happens to be Joshua Bell, an American violinist. He swoops and sways oh so very dramatically when he plays. Some people find this off-putting. Doesn't bother me particularly because he plays so marvelously well, I can put up with all his swooping and swaying, who cares? Now, another one of the top three violists in the world is Pinkas Zuckerman. I've heard, heard him play several times, and he too plays superbly. However, he happens to know that he does. He knows how good he is. When he enters the concert stage to play, he doesn't walk, he struts. The man is as proud as a peacock and his arrogance has said to be a rival to his ability. Itzhak Perlman is another superb violinist. Now, Itzhak Perlman had polio when he was seven years old, and now he is enormously physically challenged, terrifically physically challenged. I've seen and heard Itzhak Perlman play live several times, for example, at Roy Thompson Hall. He comes onto this platform with two caliper crutches. You've seen him perhaps too. It takes him forever to get from the side to the center of the stage. And then when he gets there, he lets his crutches go and he falls back into a chair. He's the only concert violinist in the world who plays sitting down. Because he has to enter the stage with his two caliper cutters, he can't carry his violin. Someone else has to carry his violin for him. But when he plays, he leaves the concert goers breathless. 
<clears throat> Not so long ago, Erzak Perlman was playing in the Lincoln Center in New York City. Partway through his violin concerto, a string broke on his violin. Now there's a protocol for this when it happens. If the guest artist has a string bark on his violin, what's supposed to happen is this. He puts his violin aside and the concert master of the orchestra offers the guest soloist his violin and the violin concerto resumes. The concert master offered Mr. Perlman his violin. Itzak declined. Instead, he sat in his chair, it took five or 10 minutes, and he disentangled the broken string from his violin and put it aside. Then he played the rest of the violin concerto on three strings only. When it was over, the whole place exploded, exploded in applause. People were beside themselves. Perlman waited until the applause subsided and then he said, you know, sometimes in life we have to do our best with what's left. Then he picked up his two caliper crutches and he lurched off the stage, swinging one leg in a big arc on account of his polio that he had when he was seven. At some point in the Advent season, we always sing the Christmas carol, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. It was written by Isaac Watts. He was a superb hymn writer. He's been called the father of the English hymn. And in fact, Isaac Watts in his lifetime published 800 hymns. Isaac Watts was afflicted with bipolar mood disorder. That means his moods went from paralyzing depression where he couldn't do anything right up into uncontrolled mania where he was out of his mind. At this point, he was deranged, he was psychotic. And then he spiraled back down again into depression and then once more up again into mania. Now, it was plain that Watts was normal, what you and I would call normal, at only two points in the cycle, when he was on his way down and when he was on his way up. During those periods, he was sane. However briefly, he was sane, he was creative and he was fruitful and he penned 800 hymns. How did he survive? He never married, but a very kind family in North London took him in, accommodated him whenever he was indisposed, fed him and protected him. Do you know what Isaac Watts was doing when he wrote 800 hymns in the midst of his huge mania and depressive bipolar affliction. Do you know what he was doing? He was doing his best with what was left. Isaac Watts wrote the Christmas carol, Joy to the World. What on earth, what is he so happy about? <laughs> he tells us, joy to the world, the Lord is come. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the wonders of his, the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love. The point of Christmas, of course, is that God is doing, God is doing his best with what's left, but God isn't doing his best with what's left of him. God is doing his best with what's left of us. That's the whole point of Christmas. Now we alone of all the creatures on the earth are made in the image and likeness of God. This means because we are made in the image of God that you and I are to be mirror reflection of God. In other words, when Valerie sees me, she's supposed to see her father in heaven. But she, when she, Valerie looks at me, that's not quite what she sees, you see. Because we are told in scripture that in the wake of the fall, in the wake of our pervasive sinnership, that image in which we were created is now marred. It's defaced. It hasn't been effaced or we wouldn't be human, but it's been defaced, it's been obscured. Then where are we going to see it? We are told in scripture that while you and I are made in the image of God, Jesus Christ is the image of God. How can this image then be restored and re-engraved in us? Isaac Watts tells us, let every heart prepare him room.
That's where it's going to start. Let every heart prepare him room. Despite his horrific suffering all his adult life, Isaac Watts could write in another hymn, my God, how endless is thy love. Can you, a man, can you imagine a man afflicted with a bipolar mood disorder all his life whose experience of God is so rich that he can write, my God, how endless is thy love. Watts knew that because of Jesus Christ, provision has been made for all of us. Our sin can be overcome and our wounds can be healed. Isaac Watts knew that on the day of our Lord's appearing, he and all Christ's people with him were going to be found no longer disfigured by sin and no longer distorted by suffering. On that day, Watts himself and all Christ's people with him are going to be found both holy and whole. Christmas tells us that in coming among us redemptively in Christ Jesus our Lord, God is doing his best with what's left of us. This is good news. This happens to be the best news. No wonder Isaac Watts could write and no wonder the church has sung ever since, joy to the world, the Lord is come. And because he's here in our midst, he can be apprehended by anybody in this room tonight. Gentle Mary laid her child, the carol, from your, it's printed in your bulletin because it's not in the Presbyterian hymn book. Gentle Mary laid her child. stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom we favor. 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Carol 149, Away in a Manger. You may remain seated as we sing. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed a star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together, all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means at least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him homage of, by giving him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, have been, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, 
they left for their own country by another road. Amen. We Three Kings of Orient are hymn number 173, stanzas one and five, and we should stand to sing this, please. Please be seated. That's you. The ninth lesson, John chapter one, verse one to 14. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was a light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone is coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Before we sing our final carol tonight, I should like to make an announcement or two. First, I want to thank so many people who have done so much for the service tonight. First of all, again, Gabriella. I mean, this is a work of art, is it? I'm going to treasure this for the rest of my life. Never mind what she does Sunday by Sunday. In the second place, our brother Alan here. Do you know how much work it takes and how much time it takes to find on the internet the hymns Sunday by Sunday, and then do it nine or 10 times over tonight, especially when the minister says we're only going to sing stanzas two and five or one and four. My gosh, it's like trying to whip pick a winner at the racetrack. And I just want to thank Alan for his indefatigable work tonight, but also week by week. I see his wife uh, nodding there. She has made a sacrifice that few of us know about. She's still nodding. Never mind. Your reward is in heaven because we have little enough for you, okay? <laughs> Lastly, 
when we sing the postlude tonight, Silent Night, Holy Night, I am going to light my candle from the Christ candle. Then the ushers are going to light their candles. And then they're going to move down the center aisle and the people that are on the aisle seats will light their candle from the usher's candle so that everyone will have a candle burning as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night. Now, you don't want hot wax on you. Therefore, when the usher comes to you, she will keep her candle upright. You will light yours by turning it sideways. If the usher turns her candle sideways, she's going to drip hot wax on your hand. And this is not pleasant. She will keep her candle upright. You will turn your candle into her. Do we have it straight? For the postlude for silent night, holy night. We're going to stand and sing in conclusion, go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is. Shepherds fear and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angels' chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Traveled on together to where the babe was laid. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lonely manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sends us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Would you remain standing, please? Together, please. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men, women, and children everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the one who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Go forth in peace and joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And once we've sung the postulate and you've written, you have lit your candles, we're going to repair to the room behind us for refreshments. There is room for us all 
and there's food for more than us all. Uh, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. Glory streams from heaven afar. Heavenly hope sing alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Go now in peace. And on behalf of the session here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario, I want to thank you all. I want to thank Victor for leading us in today's worship. I want to thank all of our readers, Sawyer, Shane, Fabrizio, Daniel, Valerie, David, Patricia, Matthew, and Jackie for their wonderful reading tonight. May you all have a wonderful and Merry Christmas. God bless. Don't forget fellowship at the back. <laughs>